we've made it as far as getting our table going. We got it rolling. And now we're ready to start installing our trays. Trays uh, can be fragile and need to uh, take some care when handling them. But in order to install them, they do go in very easily. The one thing you have to remember is to always lift from the middle in order to slide the flange end to end. Once you lift from the middle, they'll snap right in. Make sure they're snapped in completely and that'll square them up. Now when it comes to the end cap with your tray, this being an end tray, you can tell by the, the flange on the back, and this one does not have a sump. So this is the high end down at the bottom. That's where we've got our sump tray. This is our end rail. I've installed one of the corner pieces in it. Corner pieces just slide in. Because this is flanged on the back and on the sides, it can be difficult to install this tray when, the, when you have the end rail already installed into the side rail. What works better sometimes is to go ahead and hook the end rail over the tray, then slide the whole tray forward as you install it. Once both sides are aligned, it should all slide together fairly easily. All right, make sure our flanges are all intact, in good shape. Now we're just gonna take four of our pan head Phillips self-tapping screws Nice round head. We're just gonna install them right here. What this does is it makes sure that this end cap can't pull apart. Our bench is almost complete. We've got all our trays laid in. We talked about how to do the end trays. We have our sump tray down at that end. <clears throat> and we've been setting these in as we go. This is our last tray. This is gonna be our cut tray. We'll draw attention down here real quick how the trays lay in here. One end has a flange, the other end goes straight across so that when these get laid in, they overlap. When we adhere these, we'll go over the glue. We want to leave about a 5 16 inch gap right here. This area needs to be well supported in order for us to get a good glue seam and that's what this piece is for. So this tray support simply sets under the tray at the seam and allows us to have full support at our seam and allows our seam to be flat and nice for optimum drainage. When we go to cut our tray in, what we've done is we've laid our flange ends along all the way over here. That leaves us with two female flange ends. We're gonna take one of our center trays in order to determine our length <coughs> We're going to set this tray in and allow it to drop in with our quarter inch to 5 16 gap here. That's going to allow us to come back here and see where our tray needs to lay in. We'll be able to mark our tray by transferring the end of the tray onto the side of the bench, the marker laying this in here, and now marking our tray where we want to cut it. What we have to remember is we have about a three quarter inch overlap here. That means anytime we trim our tray, we need to make, we, make sure we have this three quarters of an inch so that when these overlap, this ridge here doesn't contact this here. If we go back over to our cut end, if we were to transfer our line down where we're going to be, we're just shy of three quarters of an inch. We're going to be closer to five eighths on our overlap. What we can do to remedy that is two things. We can either take a little bit off of this side, we can trim a little bit off of the flange of the tray, or we can reduce some of our gaps as we've gone along. If we move back to here, you can see that our gap is just shy of a quarter of an inch, pretty close to a quarter of an inch. What we can do is we can close this gap up to about 3 16 by lifting the center of the tray. It will allow you to move the tray easily. 
Once we've reduced this gap, we can move on down. And you can see we've increased our gap here. So just by using very small amounts of movement in multiple spots, what that's going to allow us to do is come back and remark our tray. You can see where our transfer mark is. Now we've moved our mark almost a quarter inch forward. If we move that mark a quarter inch forward, we're going to be at about an inch for our cut, and that's how we make up that space. Just needing that much more is achievable just by sliding the trays around a little bit. And this is why we always glue last. We want to make sure that we have all our trays laid in, all of them cut and ready to go before we start any gluing. Now that we have all our trays installed, we're going to glue them together. It's a polystyrene glue. It's more like a weld than a glue. So as you're moving through this, you got to work fairly quickly. It has a very, very short open time. So we're not going to overextend ourselves. We're not going to try and go past center here. We're just going to start in the middle and work our way towards ourselves, down the bench, and then come back up to complete it. So don't rush. Take your time when you're applying the glue. And you'll see as we move through it, it's, it's pretty simple, just takes a little bit of practice. I always try to keep a piece of cardboard along with my scraper because this will continue to come out of the tip and you need something to catch it, okay? As we move, we're gonna make sure we get all the way down into the trough. That trough right there is where you're gonna get leaks, not so much on the top. If you do end up with leaks after you're complete, it's tough to test it right away. It needs 24 hours to cure. If there are leaks, you can come back, add a little bit more glue, and that'll be the end of it. Don't worry about any excess going over the edges. It is good to get the whole thing spread fully. If you have any small gaps, Flip them around with your excess. Continue on. You will notice very quickly this glue starts to tack up. I would not recommend going back over it with the scraper any more than absolutely necessary because it will just create a bigger mess. Wait for it to cure. Come back later, fill it back in. You can see now why leaving the gap in the tray is important. It's because we want to fill that gap with this adhesive in order to give it a nice bond. Best to maintain a pretty high angle on your scraper. You're trying to push it in, not scrape it off. Notice this one has a little tighter gap, not a problem. Still cures just as well. Trays do move just a little bit. That's how it works.